Hi, I'm AJ Marks. And I'm Megan Soliginto. And you're listening to American Idiots Abroad. Hello, Jacquard. This is a podcast we like to call American Idiots Abroad. So today we're asking, what's the difference between US and UK TV and movies? Have you ever heard of 8 out of 10 cats does Countdown? <laughs> Why are penises on my TV screen after 10 p.m.? <laughs> and why is James Corden? Truly. Uh, well, you just <laughs> might find out during this episode. On this podcast, we discover what makes us uniquely American by analyzing the differences and similarities between the U.S. and the U.K. with a super cool guest each episode. Weird cadence. Fun. I, I just, you know, I just thought I would change it up. Mixing it up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan. I came from California to the U.K. in 2014 to get my B.A., and then I came back to get my master's and now I'm back to make podcasts. Yay. Yes. And I'm AJ. I moved from Boston to Liverpool when I was 18, also to study. And I'm still learning new things about Britain every single day that I'm here. So cute. So today we have a super special guest that we are so excited mm-hmm. about. We have been waiting a long time to have her on. Mm-hmm. So coming from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and the band, the Take That musical, we have West End's up and coming darling and our friend. And Rochelle Diedrichs. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Good. Yes. So, Rochelle, tell us where you're from and where you live now. So, I'm originally from South Africa, mm-hmm. and I moved to England when I was, like, six years old, so in 2003, and now... As of, like, last summer, I finally have my dual citizenship. Yay! Yes. Congratulations! Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You do not have a South African accent. Did you used to have a South African accent, or...? Uh, yeah, did you ever? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> South African? <laughs> when I first started learning to speak, I think I started speaking English, and because we watched, like, English and American telly, I picked up, like this weird accent and always just was like oh hello darling (laughs) even in south africa a little bit like my grandma used to call me her like little english girl oh cute yeah and if i did speak afrikaans i'd speak like with like really old hours and like it was just really bad (laughs) like it was really bad (laughs) you are her little english granddaughter officially official look at that you have the paperwork to prove it yes queen yes (laughs) so your parents are south african yeah, both South African, born and bred. We just live here. Do they have accents as well now, like a little bit more london accents, or is it no. still South African fully? Yeah, fully South African. So strong. <laughs> but, like, I can't hear it. They're my parents, so I can't hear that they have an accent. But other people are like, oh. oh. wild. Yes, I totally understand that. Because my dad was an immigrant from the Philippines to the U.S., and I remember having a conversation with my mom and his mom and saying, like, oh, it's so interesting how sometimes immigrants can not have any accent at all just like dad and they were like Megan I was probably like 10 as well and they were like your dad definitely has a Filipino accent I was like what are you talking about they're like it's definitely there I remember the moment so vividly I like looked out the window and like just thought about it and like like my glass Pensive shattering Megan. in my brain like it had to be something that dawned on me and I think my brother said it didn't even occur to him until he went to like university same yeah it's so weird how you like you don't even hear it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so today as we said tv and movies this country has like so few channels comparatively to the u.s like i didn't even realize that it was called channel four because it was literally the fourth channel until like last year megan i i just thought it was called that like nostalgically or something i didn't realize it was literally the fourth channel bbc one bbc two bbc three it's like the radio stations here there's but there's always even though there's like so few channels and rochelle tell me if you have noticed this too at any time of day Any day of the week, there will be a channel that is playing NCIS, which is an American, like, military cop show. There's always a channel that will be playing NCIS. Yeah. And I don't know why. Can we talk about this? (laughs) (laughs) Like, this is literally, like, my childhood. Like, I would just channel surf. And, like, if you didn't have Sky... Which is like, I don't know, is that your like version of cable? It's like HBO? No. No. It's, no, it's like additional TV. Like TV plus. 
So could you explain how just generally the TV channels work? Because I want to know if I have it right. So there's the free channels, which are like very, very few, very few free channels. Ten? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. And then you would have to pay for a TV license to have more? No. Please explain. So like (laughs) the TV license you have to like pay for to get the BBC and that's like channel BBC One and BBC Two and all that. And then if you get like Sky, which is like your broadband provider and your like phone provider, then you get like hundreds upon thousands of channels. You get a hundred channels for like films and that has like your classics like blockbuster films and then weird films that are like Sky's own films that it's just like really funny and you get like me and my mum used to love watching Indian soaps and they had a channel like I think it's called like Star or something but we used to watch that like all the time because it was just so extra and so amazing. Oh so they like they have Indian soap operas on um, just normal daytime television and stuff here? No that was if you had Sky. Right. Right. We have something kind of equivalent, but it would be like Telemundo. So we get like Mexican soap operas. Mm -hmm. So that's like our equivalent (laughs) of like a imported soap opera, I guess. No, I like that. But it's like it's like if you pay for a Sky subscription, you can either get like Sky Sports and all the channels like your BBC ones and ITV and all that. And then you can get like a full subscription that's like everything. So like your Indian channels, your MTV, your like your movies, like all of that stuff. We normally had Sky. Apart from that, like I, I never really watched TV apart from Family Guy Respect. on like BBC Three. <laughs> yes. And like yeah, yes. and like Channel Four, like New Girl. And I'd always see NCIS. Like if I was like home from school, it would always be on daytime telly. There'd be like twelve episodes. It is always on. (laughs) I don't know how they've done it. I'm glad you brought up New Girl because that's another show. There are a few American shows that like Britain just took and ran with it. Like, so it's NCIS, New Girl. Okay, I love NCIS. I fuck hard with NCIS, so that's just me. (laughs) But like, I I got used to watch NCIS when I was younger. So like, I fuck hard with it, um, or at least I did. So I'm not complaining. I was just very confused. (laughs) No. Yeah. Because it's like it's it's not like we ha- it's not like we do that in the U.S. with NCIS. Yeah. I don't think. So, you know, my favorite American show I would say would be like Ghost Whisperer. <gasps> yeah. Throwback. Yeah. Wow. And Buffy the Vampire Throw- Slayer. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. Yes. Being oh Stan. Of, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost Whisperer and Buffy, those were always on. And if you, like, waited long enough into the day, you'd get the, like, naughty Buffy episodes. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Naughty Buffy. (laughs) (laughs) Another American show that Britain just, like, took and ran with, Friends. Yes. People here love Friends. And I had it explained to me once. Friends in the U.S. was on in the 90s as it was airing and then i think friends in the uk aired a couple years later so it's just a generational thing that our generation is a lot more likely to have watched every episode of friends or be into friends as opposed to americans where that generation's a little bit older Mm. possibly yeah 100 percent. which is just very jarring coming here and then having everyone be obsessed with friends and then saying like oh i'm from boston and they're like oh so basically that's right near new york do you know friends yes i know i know of <laughs> friends yes megan i was just gonna ask do you remember that we had like central perk on bold street yes like yeah in our first year it was yes uh, like we used to go there all the time yeah there was a friends themed coffee shop like literal central perk from friends was on on Bold Street as a coffee shop, yeah. AJ. What? Yes. <laughs> That's wild. That's too much. For a year. Wow. Yeah. Sorry to Central Perk, but that's totally forgot about that that's why people in liverpool will walk around with like central perk shirts and stuff like still because it was an actual place it wasn't it's not just like a friend's thing i didn't even know that was a friend's reference yeah oh that's so funny (laughs) but i've seen those shirts before i was just gonna say i don't think it's just the uk i went to university for two years in southern california and i had a lot of international friends while i was down there and a lot of them were really into friends (laughs) like one of my best friends yuri i I think it was shout out Yuri if you're ever listening to this. I think he even told me once that he learned English from watching Friends. He's Brazilian. So there's a long history of friendship. I think 
like the exporting <laughs> come in a little bit, like a couple years later, and then our our generation just like lapping it up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so funny because when I first came to Liverpool, I had so many people saying that I sounded like I was straight out of Friends, or when I would talk about some American adventure that I had, or some adventure that I had in general that just happened to be in America, they'd be like, "Oh wow, that's like an that's like an episode of Friends." Mm-hmm. Really? Oh and my I was gosh. like, "Why is this your point of reference for everything?" Nobody said that to me. Oh, that's maybe so you just funny. don't seem like you come straight out of Friends, Megan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not from the East Coast. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> So earlier you talked about Family Guy and I've been obsessed with Family Guy since like eighth grade. And what I thought was really funny is if you watch American Dad or Family Guy in the UK, sometimes they'll have episodes that are just completely just like very slightly sped up. They're at like 1.2 times the speed. Oh, why? Because I think it's to fit in more commercials. I don't know, but it's just very odd. And they're always on like at night, just like very sped up for some reason. Like I didn't really notice it outside of the theme music Mm -hmm. like the theme music tipped me off because I was like this is in a different key my friends were like no this is in the key it's always in and they're like this is how it's always is and I'm like no and I pulled it up on YouTube and turns out different key sped up oh wow Wow. all the dialogue too sped up so I don't know (laughs) exactly why they do that but I always just thought it was really really interesting oh my god it's kind of trippy that is some sneaky shit Yeah. yeah I would never have known no I'm like mind blown right now because I've just not known. Yeah, she needs a moment. Yeah, I've not known Family Guy and it's an American dad in its true form. Oh, no. <laughs> like, how it's supposed to be. <laughs> how it's supposed to sound, yeah. yeah. It's just funny because I felt like I was being gaslit too because I was like, no, this is sped up and everyone was like, no, this is how it's always been, AJ. Like, I was like, what is going on here? Always been here. Yes, exactly. That was the specification exactly. that they were just missing. Like, I always felt really like a rebel because I was watching like Family Guy and American Dad because it was on after like Watershed so like that's like after 10 o'clock is it called Watershed or is Watershed the show that it's on afterwards I think that's what they call it like Watershed is like 10 o'clock that's when like you can start swearing and the nudity that's when the dicks come out that's when the dicks come out yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so first of all it's really funny that it's called Watershed like the watershed moment when the dicks come out like the watershed just like it sounds like it's not just dicks and behind but we're specifically (laughs) thinking of naked attraction yes Yeah, so we'll talk about Naked Attraction right now. Before you introduce this, can I just say that when my brother came to the UK for the first time to come see me graduate from my BA, my brother and my mom got to the hotel room. They sat down in, like in the room, decided to flip on the television to see what was on. It was evening. No. Naked Attraction came on and my mom and brother proceeded to watch the camera like pan down immediately and just see like, Full on just, vagina. like five or six penises oh, or yeah. whatever. Uh, that too and like you know it's not that's not always what you're that's not what you expect as an American um, a good Christian American <laughs> say. so the concept of the show so the concept of the show is you have one person who's clothed walk into a room And there are five or six contestants, five or six people that like suitors that they can choose from, but they're all covered up. Like you can't see at all what they look like. They're covered. They're behind a wall. They talk to the host for a little bit, talk about their tastes, what they like, you know, and then the screens start to lift only above the waist or only to above the waist. So you can see the waist down, you know, flaps out, dicks, you know, (laughs) balls sagging, dicks flinging around first. first. So you have to pick to eliminate one of the The genitals (laughs) the contestant who is playing the picker has to eliminate one of the other contestants one of the genitals based on their genitals (laughs) alone brutal sometimes they'll have like tattoos on their leg which will throw some people off you know sometimes you'll see how short someone is or how tall someone is and so it's not just the genitalia but it's it's mostly it's mostly the flaps it's mostly Mm. then after they remove someone they get to see what they look like like total they do like a full body reveal of that person i thought it was then the neck they do the full body reveal of the person who was eliminated Um, oh i see yes yeah and then they go up all the way up until the neck so you can see everything but their face 
face. And then you have to judge based on the titties or, you know, the man boobs. <laughs> or moobs, if you will. Of course. Or the, the moobs, yes. And so then you eliminate one more person, and then that person gets a full body reveal. And then the contestant, the picker, has to then get completely naked as well. <gasps> I didn't know this. <laughs> yes. And so they have to open up, and everyone's face is revealed as a naked person to the other naked people and then talk to them a little bit about things and then they get a feel for their personality. And the only clothed person in the room is the host. Yes, the only clothed person in the room (laughs) is the person who is like, you must, you naked person must choose between these three naked people. Yes, that is how it goes. Oh my God, I didn't know that. And these are all just British citizens. These are all just... (laughs) It's actually, it's a surprisingly wholesome show. Like it's actually, you would think that it'd be raunchy, you think that it'd be sexy. No, it's like actually very wholesome. Whole? I don't think you want to use the word wholesome. Um, All right, Megan. You have a dirty mind that needs scrubbing. AJ, I love that you called them suitors. You like called all the people in the lineup suitors like they're like gentlemen callers with their dicks out. Well, that's what they called them, I think, on The Bachelor, right? Right? I don't know. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't know what they called them on Naked Attraction, though. Because why watch The Bachelor when you can see dicks and vaginas Ooh. on Naked Attraction? <laughs> do they get paid to do it? Yeah. I uh, Yeah, but not a lot. <laughs> For your troubles. I can imagine they probably get like a thousand, two thousand. That's not enough money. No. <laughs> but then you also get to be on TV with your flaps out, you know? <laughs> so another thing that I think we should bring up is Wild Child's reception in the UK versus the US. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Megan. Yes. See, yeah, so Americans probably won't know unless you're a big Emma Roberts fan, even though it's an American movie. Or no, it's a British movie starring Emma Roberts playing an American. Mm-hmm. Yes. British made film, but it just has Emma Roberts playing an American as the lead. I personally adore Emma Roberts, so that is why I've seen this film. Yes. Most Americans have not seen it. Brits love it. It's like a classic. It's like a Mean Girls kind of thing. You know, it's like it's like up there. Yeah. yeah. Is it? I- I'd say, yeah, up there. For sure. It made my childhood. What? Yes, exactly. You know, what was really surprising, because I thought no one knew this film because I was living in America when I had seen it. I was like, oh, no one knows about this film. Probably straight to DVD. Like, probably didn't do that well. You know, whatever. And so then when I came to Britain, I remember I was with a group of people in my first year, and they were like, what should we watch on Netflix? And there were like maybe eight of us. And all of them saw Wild Child and they're like, Wild Child, let's let's watch Wild Child. Like, that's the best film. That's like, that film is my childhood. And I was like, the fuck? How do you guys all know this? Yeah, it was big. That's it wild. Was bizarre. Child. It was really big because it just kind of like told our childhoods. Well, not told our childhoods, but like the ones that, the childhood that we wanted, like we wanted a cool American friend to come over and like dress us all up with like her dad's like money and like, <laughs> oh my God, just loved it. There's this bit really early on in the film where Emma Roberts is like, I'm pescatarian on like Mondays, uh, vegetarian on Wednesdays <laughs> and like vegan on like Thursdays. And I literally was like, okay, I'm a pescatarian now. Like, <laughs> she literally influenced my life that much. Do you actually become a pescatarian? Yep. <laughs> I, are you still a pescatarian? No. Oh, okay, well, well. Imagine. I'm, I would have been imagine, impressed. Imagine. Because my parents are South African and all they do is barbecue and eat meat. Like, when I said, Mom, I'm a pescatarian, she was like, mm, no, you're not. <laughs> she was like, not in this house. <laughs> so but yeah, that's how much it influenced my childhood like oh I just love it yeah so for Megan the premise of this film is Emma is this really rich spoiled American brat great and she throws like this big party and something goes wrong or whatever like she loses something whatever her dad gets upset and sends her off to a British boarding school where her I think her mom who is um, dead in the film. Her mom went to that boarding school. So he sends her to her mom's alma mater. And she at first is like super rude to everyone. She's like, you know, she's wild. She wants to cause drama and stir up trouble. And she gets a, a redemption arc. That's essentially the film. Yeah, she comes to the school with like the bleach blonde, like platinum y hair. And then, like, towards the end, she like dyes it like a honey brown. Mm-hmm. So that you know that she's real. Yeah, so that you know she's changed. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's evolved. Yeah, brunettes are like soft. Because yeah. <laughs> she's visually different. Yeah. <laughs> you guys love to name things super um, interesting things, <laughs> which is my segue into eight out of ten cats does countdown. Can you explain this? Do you yeah, watch this show? Yeah, what the fuck is 8 out of 10 <laughs> cats does countdown? What does that oh, mean? Oh, why the fuck is it called that? Yeah, yeah what? Why, what does yeah, that mean? Guys, this is where my, like, foreigner comes in because yeah. I no <laughs> fucking clue. Like, some British programs, I'm like, why do you do this, like, every day and sit down and watch this every day? <laughs> like, Do you know what it is, though? Or no? No. No. <laughs> it literally just seems insane to me, some of the programs. So there's 8 out of 10 cats. Mm-hmm. And then there's eight out of ten cats does countdown. There are two programs. Does countdown. What is his grammar? Countdown is literally just like a math show. Right. Like a game show kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a game show where they have like four really smart people and like it used to be like Carol Vorderman. She would be the like presenter that's like really smart and just is really beautiful. And then there'd be like, I think a group of people that are like trying to win. So they'd have stuff like they'd give you six letters and you'd have to make like the biggest, most interesting intellectual word out of it and then they'd give you five sets of like random numbers and then a big sum that you would have to get to and they would be like what's the most efficient way that you can get there and it was just like for smart oh. people like british people love like the smart people shows so like countdown qi yeah like university question time i think yeah question time and then pointless yes, pointless, pointless i fucking love i will watch pointless till the cows come home because i just fucking love it yeah but that <laughs> but that title what, what are these titles yeah. so, wait, so what is eight out of ten yeah, cats? Yeah, eight out of ten cats okay so eight out of ten cats is a british comedy panel show currently airing on e4 it was first broadcast on channel four in 2005 it is hosted by jimmy carr who's a very famous comedian here the current team captains are rob beckett and katherine ryan oh katherine ryan so the show is based on statistics and opinion polls and draws on polls produced by a variety of organizations and new polls commissioned for the program carried out by Harris Poll. The title is derived from an old popular misquoting of a well-known advertising tagline for Whiskas Cat Food, which claimed that 8 out of 10 owners said their cats preferred it. Okay. So, for some reason, they called themselves 8 out of 10 cats, and then 8 out of 10 cats does Countdown, is literally the people from 8 out of 10 cats does the TV show Countdown. Do the smart thing. Yeah. That's such a confusing title. Right? It's so confusing. Yeah. I, I would never have got eight out of ten cats from that. I know. Um, speaking of Catherine Ryan, Catherine Ryan has kind of based her whole career, not her whole career, but at least all the things that I've seen, on being a Canadian in the UK. Mm -hmm. And like being a Canadian working in the UK. She had a Netflix show about it. She does all her stand up about having like a really posh British daughter. <laughs> I love her. Shout out <laughs> Catherine Ryan. If you want to come on the show, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Slide into our DMs. Yeah, she's great. But I do love when, like, Americans are in British things. When Americans do it, it's like we just accept it and we're like, yes, she's made her life over in Britain. We love it. And it's just kind of, like, not like, I'm American. Um, <laughs> but when British people like, when British people do it, it's like, ooh, I love tea. Like, it's not the same. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. not the same. It's like you wouldn't see a British character in Riverdale and their whole personality would be that they're British, like, if they were. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I've just not watched enough telly, but, like, I just don't see it as much. I want to see it more. I, I do feel like there are those shows where it's, like, the American is kind of, like, the weird element, I suppose, of the yeah. show. Like, Ted Lasso recently is the show starring Jason Sudeikis about English football. Okay. He was, like, an American football coach who came over. It was based on an advertisement that did really, really well, like, seven years ago, and then they've made an entire TV show out of it, and now it's, like, nominated for a bunch of awards. I love Jason Sudeikis. I should watch this. Apparently, it's, like, one of the best shows of 2020. It's, like, so wholesome. Mm. But it's about, like, this American, like, not really understanding British football. But he's their coach. I might learn something about football from that show. Yes. And then we also had Rob Lowe star in a show called Wild Bill. He played an American cop that came over to Boston, UK, I think it is. Not Boston, UK. That's a Boston? Yeah, there 
hilarious. Shut up. I met someone who was like, they were like, where are you from? And I was like, oh, I'm from Boston. And I'm not actually, I'm actually from Boxford, but it's like just right near Boston. So to Brits, I'm from Boston. So I said, oh, I'm from Boston. And they're like, oh, I'm from Boston too, but Boston, England. And I was like, huh? <laughs> wow. <What>? Hello? <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And then I looked it up and there's both a Boxford and a Boston in England. I'm just convinced that every place in the UK has a name in the East Coast of the US. Yes. Yeah. Everything in New England, all the streets. You know, when I had British friends come over to Boxford, they were like, every street, every town name, everything is just named after something in England. And I was like, yeah, huh? That's why it's called New England. Yep. New York, just York. That's what happens when you colonize. Yay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> that's what happens. Exactly. And that's why we have all the Spanish names on our side. Yeah. Yay. Colonization. <laughs> Megan, you came up with the name of this podcast. Isn't this podcast based on An Idiot Abroad? <gasps> yes! Which is a British TV series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For anyone who didn't understand the name of this podcast, in which I probably would not have either because I've never known about An Idiot Abroad until Megan told me about it. <laughs> American Idiots Abroad is just literally American Idiot, the Green Day song slash musical, and An Idiot Abroad, which is a show starring who? Ricky Gervais and his friend, um... Oh, what's his name? Is it Carl Pin Pilkington? Carl Pilkington? Yes, it is. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington is the idiot abroad. So basically, like, the whole premise was Carl Pilkington was the producer of uh, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant's radio show. He basically would just, like, chime in and just, like, he's ridiculously English. Like, the most stereotypical English guy. And they found it hilarious whenever he would go traveling or something. They just found him hilarious because of how English he was. And so they basically started this entire television series called An Idiot Abroad, which took place on Sky One. And I think it was also shown in the US because my dad actually showed me the show. It was on for like three seasons and they just sent him to different foreign countries and just filmed him just being in the different countries. And they would just make him do just things that he would not want to do because he's so dry his humor is so dry it's just like why would you walk the great wall of china like that's a waste of time <laughs> whereas i would love to do that right? but he, the way he said it would just be so funny love to do that for a period of time and he's just miserable yeah he just hated everything he didn't like anything Cynical he hated everything AF. he didn't enjoy very british participating in culture yeah <laughs> British hates everything. <laughs> she can say it. We can. Yes. <laughs> so that's where the title of the show comes from. For anyone who didn't know, there's your fun fact. You guys are on your second season. Is this the first time you've explained the title? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm honored to have been here to witness it. Yes. <laughs> Can you please grace the audience with your Missy impression Ooh, from Big Mouth? Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me remember Missy. Um, Fans of Big Mouth. So you you have officially auditioned for the role of Missy. Yes, I did. In Big Mouth. I did. Yes. Which is wonderful after your Twitter campaign, <laughs> which I loved, you. by the way. I, I'm obsessed with that video. I sent it to so many people. I was like, can you believe Rochelle can do this? Listen to this. This is amazing. I'm trying to remember what she sounds like now. Um, Andrew, can, could you please do it a, a British accent? accent for me because like i think all americans can't do british accents and i need proof oh my god wait that's <laughs> wild so thank you so much for joining us rochelle we have had an enlightening conversation hopefully yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> to some extent people know about ncis in the uk now so i think people are satisfied uh <laughs> is there anywhere that people can follow you lurk you find out your next project uh, whenever that is happening yada yada i mean you can lurk if you like <laughs> <laughs> i have a food instagram called snacking with rochelle Ooh, which wait. if you want to give that some love we'll go follow now. please do what's the handle just snacking with rochelle at snacking with rochelle yeah yes i'm gonna follow that now i make food that's just not snacks so it's like let's have a snack 
and it's like a full course pasta meal just because I love snacking. I think it's the most important thing. <laughs> AKA eating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was something that started when I was on tour because I'd always have to like snap between cues, like going on stage and stuff. So I would just have like full blown deliveries. <laughs> oh my God, these are great. Wow. Oh my God. You're a great food photographer. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm trying to work on my game. Like not only does the food <laughs> look good, but like you, it's also a good photo of the food. I'm trying. You know, which is rare because it's like sometimes I have food that I'm like, oh, this is fit. Like this food is fit. And then I take a picture and I'm like, that looks like dog shit. Same. <laughs> so that does not apply to your Instagram. It's a perfect balance. <laughs> and once theater comes back, are you going to be in anything or? <laughs> the pressure. No, it's, I, there's no pressure. I just. Are you going to give us grandkids, Rochelle? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's what it seems like. This. Are you going to get a job? You're, as soon as I was saying it, I was like, this isn't phrased right. I mean, hopefully, I still had like nine weeks left at Harry Potter. And if they want me back, because we are still technically contracted. <laughs> if they want me back, then I'll go. I'll go be a wizard. Like it, Just casually? Yeah, I guess. I guess I'll be a wizard. You're a wizard, Rochelle. <laughs> but yeah, if, if Harry Potter will have me back, I'll go back. But yeah. Did you recently vote? voice Hermione in something? Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. It was for Pottermore. Like, every year they do a big thing at King's Cross on the 1st of September to, like, go back to Hogwarts. Like, the train goes off. Like, everyone gathers and stuff. But because we couldn't do it for 2020, because obviously COVID, like, we weren't allowed to have crowds, they just got a load of the cast in of The Cursed Child London to, like, voice the characters and, like, voice some, like, memorable scenes from... Well, every 1st of September scene in the books. So that was so much fun. Amazing. Because I've always wanted to be Hermione, like, always. And now you are. Yeah, that was fun. So if anyone is going to be in the West End once COVID is done, <laughs> go see Rochelle in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Because, yeah, I mean, if you like wizards and you like you know fun really sick magic exactly go do that uh we'll we'll go do that you might see us there if you want to lurk me and find out everything that i'm doing you can follow me at i am solo music that is on instagram twitter facebook soundcloud pinterest tiktok all of that clubhouse um, not Pinterest, actually. It's a different one on Pinterest. Not Pinterest, no. <laughs> it's a different handle. It's a different handle on Pinterest. Yeah, I have some music and another video coming to you guys soon. So follow me on Spotify and you can <laughs> yes. listen to my song Highs and Lows on yes. Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you get your music. And AJ, where are you? Where, where can the people find you? You can find, find you? me on all the same social media platforms at AJ Marks Official. Made it real easy for sure. y'all. And, um, and also, yeah. we have a second series called Main Pod Girl, which you can check out. That's for a subreddit called Popheads. Essentially, on that podcast, all we do is talk about pop music. So we recently released some episodes about One Direction. Yeah, so if you like shit like that, you can check that out. It's called Main Pod Girl. And then we also have a website soundbitepodcasts.com that is our company name yeah if you like this episode if you like all the other previous episodes we've done of american idiots abroad or of main pod girl we also do blogs to accompany all the episodes just to kind of like add on to all the things that we wanted to talk about in the episode but we couldn't get to so feel free to check that out if you want to find out more go find those online at soundbitepodcast.com yes siree if you like this show please leave a review it would really help us and let us know what you want to hear next time. It would really help Megan. I would be unaffected. <laughs> It'll help me emotionally. Only, yes. only me, not AJ. Yes. <laughs> If you want to support me, you'll have to do so in other ways. Actually, to support me, support Megan by giving this show five stars. <laughs> That's adorable. And supporting AJ today. AJ, do you want to go out on a clip of one of your songs? Because we haven't done that in a while. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, I haven't heard in a while. Let's go. Let's let's go out on the switch. Oh, cute. Yeah. Yeah. Go find AJ Marks on Spotify or Apple Music and stream this song. This is the Switch by AJ Marks. Okay, let's take it from the top. It all started when she walked his way. This might sound optimistic, but it's not. Reads out more like a tragedy. He said, Can I have your number, baby? What you here to do 
She said, if that's how you're coming, baby, you ain't got a clue. A few hours later, they're going home together. One change for the worse and one change for the better. Then they kissed. And all the power shifts. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you, Rochelle.